did you drop him? Did the, did yeah, the gov drop him? I said to the gov, wait, no. <laughs> and see, when you bang a gov, you know they're going to What's going on guys? This video is sponsored by Louis. Some of you know him on Insta as Loads. One of the best Instagram names, let me tell you that. Guys, Louis has been building online businesses for the last five to 10 years and he has spent the last five years coaching others one-to-one -one on how to start businesses. Louis's got over 2,000 profitable testimonials. And guys, let me be honest with you. I wouldn't let someone sponsor the show who I didn't vouch for. So trust me, it's legit. Literally, just go send him a DM on Instagram. It's at Loads. All you gotta do is say to him, I come from the Blue Tick Show, help me make some money. And I know most of these people out there scams and there's plenty of people out there offering you millions and millions of pounds and stuff like that. Louis is one of the 1% who actually do it properly. Legitly, you don't need nothing. All you literally need is a phone and Wi-Fi. Send him a message and leave the rest to him. Guys, and if you wanna know why I'm sitting here pushing it so much, it's because realistically, Doing a nine to five ain't gonna get you nowhere. And I know most people sit here and say this because they're getting some sort of commission for it and stuff like that, but I really ain't. I'm telling you as a good person, the host of the show, doing a nine to five ain't gonna get you nowhere. So go message Louis, say you come from the Blue Tick Show, just ask Louis for the business model, let him do the explaining and let him explain to you how he can help you. I'll see you soon. <laughs> What's going on guys and welcome back to the Blue Tick Show. Opposite me today, I've got CK. CK, firstly, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Mostly known for the kidnap charge. Kidnap, stick ups, you name it, man. Firstly, before I jump into it, the viewers are here. They're looking behind you. You've got two serious looking guys behind you. Yeah. Who are they? My security, you know. Well, that's how you roll every day. That's how I roll, man. Obviously, I'm on license, so can't really do too much so anything i need done they do it for me they look serious i can't lie listen first podcast ever where i've seen two security guard standing behind someone but listen let's jump into it before i dive into it firstly i got asked a question what's the mask about uh you know it was obviously i'm doing a music thing but i still kind of want a life away from music in it so it's kind of like just a bit of privacy you know what i'm saying yeah well listen it works I didn't even know who you were when you walked through the door. Uh, but let's dive into your back life a little bit. Who is CK? Right. Oh, it is CK. That's just the, uh, that's kind of like my alter ego. You know what I'm saying? That's 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 the mask in it. You know what I'm saying? CK is the mask. CK is what you see with a mask on in it. And obviously, who I am is who I am under the mask. You know what I'm saying? So, Your upbringing, yeah. where are you from? From East London, Beckton, you know? From East London, Beckton. What was your upbringing like? Boy, see, you know what it is? I'm not gonna feel sad for myself or nothing like that, you know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna say it was the worst upbringing, but it wasn't the best upbringing, you know what I'm saying? But I tried to make the most of a bad situation, you know what I'm saying? And school? You went to school? Yeah, yeah, I went to school. School in Beckton as well, Kingsford. You finished all the school? Yeah, 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 finished school, all of that. Now, you know, was, with me, it was different, that. Like, like, my mum didn't play that game. Like, I weren't one of these, you know them kids that got kicked out of school and all of that stuff? Nah, nah, nah. My mum weren't hearing that stuff. I'm not going to lie, yeah. My mum was on smoke. <laughs> like, she was on smoke still. Like, I was brought up right. My mum tried her best, you get me, but I just went off the rails, innit? So go on, explain to us a little bit where you get, went off the rails because obviously strict mum usually stops you from going off the rails. Yeah. How did it change? Do you know what it is though? Me personally, I feel like I know a lot of black kids, like, growing up, especially African kids, like, they were disciplined by their parents. So I feel like that discipline helps, but at the same time, that's kind of, like, what makes us kind of angry, do you know what I'm saying? Because it's, like, all that discipline, all that beating I was getting from my mum, it just made me an angry child. So, like, when I'm going to school now and I'm getting into fights and I'm just doing what I'm doing, it just kind of, you know what I'm saying? Nah, so. Did you not get kicked out of school? No, no, no. Like I said, no, 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 no. My mum didn't play those games, man. I'm not even play those games. So though. when did you get involved in the, the crime world? So obviously, like, growing up in my area, going to school, through your going to school, you're, it's all around you. Do you know what I'm saying? It's all around you. But you see me growing up initially, I was just a ladies, man. That was my thing. I think <laughs> I was, I'm not going to lie, me, it was girls, man. I was that guy, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just going to parties, motives. I was girls, innit? That was my thing, innit? Pull the mic a little bit closer to you. Yeah, so my thing, my thing was girls, you know what I'm saying? That was my thing, innit? Did you have any older brothers? 
Nah, 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 nah. I'm the eldest. You're the eldest, yeah. brothers. Obviously, I had older cousins than that. And obviously, the Were ones you tight with them? the area, but yeah. Were you close with them? Yeah, yeah, I was close with the family. You know, what? me and my family, we grew together. They're from my area, innit? Most of my family are from my area, innit? You get me, so. Was your older cousins involved in the, the crime world? Yeah, like my cousins were involved. Uh, yeah, so. How, how did you actually get involved in it, though? Because you don't just wake up one day. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, like I said, obviously, look, you, you go school with these people. Do you know what I'm saying? You go school with these people, you grow with them. So naturally, and I feel like you get more involved with the decisions that you make. But for me, the turning point is kind of like when I went prison. Because it's like I'm in prison. I'm on a wing with my school friends. We're keeping up with badness. And then, well, then now there's no turning back. But, you know but before you were in prison, there must have been situations in your life where you had to resort to crime. There yeah, must no, have been course, situations that got out of hand. And you, you see me, things. from young, I've always been a robber. Like, I'm a stick-up kid, I'm a robber. So growing up, my thing was Indian gold, IG. That's what we used to do in my area. So like we kind of like used to go to the high street, boom, snatch gold, quickly go. And me, I'm fast. You're not catching me. So boom, quickly, high street, boom, boom. That was my thing. You get me? So that's kind of like what we was doing in it. You know what I'm saying? Did you ever have situations where people got hold of you? No, 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 no. You're not catching me. I promise you, you ain't catching me. No one, please, no one. Listen, once I'm gone, I'm gone. Ain't no one catching me. And like you said, you went to prison. What did you first go to prison for? So the first time I went to prison, so the first time I went to prison was for remand. I was on remand. It was a, it was an AM case. Obviously, it got dropped. And then after that, I'd been to prison a few times on remand. And then the first time that I actually got sentenced, like I actually went to jail for sentence. I got three years to do 18. Um, that was for robbery, fraud, a knife and money laundering. Before we dive into that, what, what was your first time in prison like? Because you come from a strict family, like you said, yeah. your mum don't don't have none of that shit in the house. Yeah, do you know what it was? I remember the first time on the bus. And How old was you? I was I was a teen, didn't I? I was a youngster. I was like 18, 19. Young. Yeah. So the first time, I remember being on the bus and then when the judge refused me bail and he said, Ramani to prison, I'm thinking, yo, I'm going jail, blood. Like, yo, like, this is, this is real. Like, I'm actually going jail. So I remember on the bus, There'd been a couple of guys that had been to jail and I was like asking them a hundred and one questions. Like, oh, what's Joe like? Is it like this? Is it like that? Like, what's it going to be like? This and that. Like, I was asking bare questions because obviously you don't know what to expect. You know what I'm saying? You hear about it, but this is in my face now. It's real. Like, I'm actually about to experience it. So. Were you scared of going in prison? Nah, I feel like it was more of the unknown. Like, what's it really going to be like? Like, is it, you know, like in the movies where they say you're going to have to go there and you're going to have to punch the biggest guy and and I have to do all of that stuff. And you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm yeah. thinking all of this. I'm thinking, nah, oh, like, is someone just gonna come up to me and say, what, what are you in jail for? Boom, and just stab me. Like, I was, oh, there was bare things running through my head. Do you know what I'm saying? I was thinking, oh, I didn't even know what to expect. So obviously you touched down in prison. What was it like? I touched down in prison. I'm seeing, I'm like, yo, yo what, what are you doing here? Like, just, <laughs> like yo, it's, it's a link up. Like, yo, I know this guy. Yo, like, it was a link up, innit? Like, I'm thinking, raw. Oh. Like, Started seeing people I knew and then, like, I'm not gonna lie, the first time I went there, like I said, I was young. So it was fun, like, it was fun, like, not fun, but it was fun, innit? Because it's like, I'm seeing people I know, I'm young, like, I'm seeing phones, I'm seeing this, I'm seeing that, and it's like, raw, like, you know what I'm saying? And obviously, when I went to prison the first time, the people from my area, they kind of had it, the wing a certain way, so I just went straight into it. Any problems in prison? No, them times there I was young, so I had a point to prove. So I was just young, I was hot, like, going up guards. I wanted to fight anyone, like, I had a point to prove them times there. Because like I said, innit, like, I'm young, I'm in prison, like, I want to prove a point. So, yeah, yeah, I was, I'm not going to lie, I was doing the most. How did your mum take it when you first went? Um, So the first time I went to prison, I tried to hide it from my mum at the beginning and say that I was at football camp. It. Yeah, yeah, I tried to say I was at football camp. You try to hide prison from yeah, your mum. Yeah, yeah, I tried to hide it. <laughs> but listen, it's the first time I've been told that one. Yeah, you know, yeah, I tried to hide it. Like, Did she catch you? Yeah, no, of course, because like, obviously, even though my mum's aff, like, I kind of mocked her intelligence. So I'm calling from a prison phone. Not, you get me, like, but I'm telling her, like, look, I'm, 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 I'm just doing football overseas and da 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 da. 
And then, yeah, one day, like I said, I got family in it, so the word would get around. And then, yeah, one day she told me she knows I'm in prison. And when you got released, what happened? You went straight back to it? Yeah, so I got released. Now, in prison was the worst thing that happened to me. For real? Yeah. Uh, I felt like the man. Uh, especially because, like I said, you see, when you go to jail for remand in certain cases, and you beat those cases, you kind of feel un untouchable. Like, you feel like, wow, like, I went against the law and I won. Yeah, yeah. I come out on top. So that's how I felt. Like, wow, I just gone to jail for AM. I beat it. I'm and, untouchable. And when you're saying AM, what was actually involved in that case? What were they allegedly saying happened? So obviously they're allegedly saying that a shooting happened. Yeah. And the technicalities around it was what helped me. Someone die? No, 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 no. What happened? Yeah, so basically they allege that someone got out of a car in an area and shot at someone and the person got hit and they allege that I was that person. How did you, well, clearly you didn't do it. That's why you're not there. Yeah. But what, what, what was the technicalities that kept you out? So I got eye condition. Yeah. So they're saying that the person that done it was like a precise shoot, like this person was, yeah, get me, like he got out of the car, he hit this person point blank, he knew what he was doing. Yeah. And the woman who was in the car next to it, cause it was in the middle of traffic said that, listen, I would ID this person anywhere, any place. I know this person's face. And when it came to the ID period, they never picked me out. So Fair enough. That's what helped, yeah. So when you come out of prison, what was life like when you first come out? Um. Bro, like, I don't know what it is about girls and guys that come out of jail, but yo, I come out of jail and they were on me. Like, they were on my dick, man. I swear, it was it was like something I've never seen before in my life. Like, I was getting girls. When you're young, especially like young offenders and all of that, especially when you're younger, I don't know what it is, but girls just love a guy in jail, innit? Like, especially when you're younger, like the concept of someone being in jail, girls love it. So them times there, yeah, I was speaking to girls when I was in jail, like, yeah, definitely. I was speaking to bad girls, I'm not gonna lie, I loved it. Like them times there, like I said, you'll see a transition. So them times there, every movement I made in jail, you'll know about it. I used to snap it, put it on Insta, like everything, like I, like the world knew I was in, I was an ambassador for jail the first time I went in jail. Listen, I don't know. I don't know how your how your room didn't get raided. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. So obviously you come out, you jump straight back to get women. That was your main focus, I'm guessing, yeah? No, obviously my women, the street stuff, like and obviously random times there. Like, you know what I'm saying? Snapchat's just about coming around. So social media's playing a big part. So anything that people are doing, it's on social media. It's there for the world to see, Twitter, Instagram. So them times they'll come out of jail and that your life is just being documented. And obviously them times there, that's when the music scene actually started popping. Like that's when this whole kind of drill thing like actually started. Like people were going back and forth on tunes and dissing each other and this and that. Like that's when beef was actually entertainment. You know what I mean? Everyone could see it. Yeah, it was entertainment. Like you would go there, you'd go there, do a video on their block. Just for views, not even to do anything. Cause look how stupid it is. You're going to someone else's block on camera recording it. You're giving the you're giving the police what they want. hundred percent. But them times there, that's what I'm saying. When I come out, that's when the involvement of it. It was fun. Like do you know what I'm saying, some of my friends around me started doing music. They started getting bigger. Like it was entertaining. Like it started getting Beef fun. Things got more serious as well. Yeah, things got more serious. But In more serious. What do you mean by more serious? More violence. Yeah, more violence in it. Like. More stabbing started happening, more shooting started happening. Like this stuff started getting like, yo, like it was frying, like. And obviously, you was, was you part of a gang? I wouldn't say I was part of a gang, like, but like I said, my friends that I went to school with, the people that I grew with, you get me, it's a brotherhood, innit? It's not, I'm not gonna say it's a gang, like, but it's just kind of like a brotherhood. The area I'm from, these are the people that I grew with, these are my brothers, these are the people that I have history with, I've, I've been through things with, you know what I'm saying? So what situations occurred when you are out of prison the first time that you had to deal with, that you can talk on? Boy, oh, you know, I gotta watch what I say, man. You know, the next mad start calling me a snitch and start indicting my friends and 
I do my friends like Bobby Schmur. The next thing I'm talking to my friends, their houses started getting raided. You get me? But let's just say like situations were happening and we had to deal with it, innit? Like we actually, like this is not no movie. This is real. Like situations are happening and we're dealing with it. Like, <laughs> like friends are in hospital. Friends are, things are happening to people around you. Like it's real. Like, and we're dealing with it. Like, it's no game. Like, you're actually leaving your house, coming back home saying, thank you, God. <laughs> nah. Where would you stay? Would you stay at your mum's house? Yeah. Do you know what's mad? So my mum lives in like near the area that I got problems with. Oh, for real? So for me to go home. It was a situation every night. Oh, it was crazy, man. It was crazy. It was Weren't crazy. you ever worried about people coming to your mum's house? Boy. I think people know better than to cross that line, innit? I mean, oh, well, like, you know what I'm saying? But as much as you've got a serious, let's say, resume, people know about you, your name holds weight. There's obviously other people out there as well who... No, of course, of course. I'm not even going to say naturally about... It's nothing about resume or people know serious name. I just think, like, going to someone's mum's house, I need you to understand that's... Your life or his life? <laughs> you're opening a different kind of worms. Like, that's a, that's, that's personal, man. That's mummy, you know what I mean? That's mumsy. So that's different. Forget the beef, forget anything. That's different kind of worms. Like, know what you're doing if you're doing that, innit? You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, listen, that's, that's the one rule. Obviously, you had situations. Yeah. You did. We we know that. What kind of situations was you involved in? Like, like I said, them terms there, kidnapping, that was my thing. Like, yo, hop out on a man, take what he's got or put him in a car. Let's go. That was me. That's, let's go. Like, I used to love the feel of it. I was hands on. Like, like look, anyone that had lines, anyone that was whipping all these things, good on you. I rate it. That's your thing. But me, I couldn't do that, man. It's bigger than me. I ain't got patience for that. I want it now. I want it now. <laughs> right now. Let's go. I want it now. That's me. What's the most you took of someone? <sighs> Boy. Again, there's certain things I've done, certain amounts that I start mentioning and people start thinking, wait, hold on, that got taken from me. Was that him? Yeah, we're on some Cardi B and Offset shit, like, do you know what I'm saying? And like, if we're, we're not going to mention names now, obviously, because of what you've done, but what? What's wrong? No, go on, let's pause, tell what's wrong. We can still talk, yeah? Okay, cool. So obviously we're not going to mention names or nothing like that, but... Violence has been used in these situations. Yeah, I'm not no, saying you've done it. I'm not saying your boy's done it. Yeah. But what kind of violence have you seen that's been used? <sighs> Boy, man, man. I've seen people get tortured. I've seen people get bathed in acid. I've seen people get things stuck up their ass. I've seen... Hold on, stop. Pause a second. You've seen people get stuff stuck up their ass. Yeah. What, does that work? Do they pay? Where <laughs> whatever works in it, you know what I'm saying, bro. You know when you're in that moment, anything goes. ACG in it. You know I'm saying oh. anything goes for real. Innit? When you're in that moment, whether it's an iron, whether it's a blowtorch, whether you're gonna bang at someone's knee, whether you're gonna buck fifty them, whether you're gonna poke them up, whether you're gonna taser them, you're gonna do what you're gonna do to get that money. When you set your mind on that money. You're going to do what you need to do. And obviously you went in prison for one of these situations, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, I did. How long did you do? So I've done four and a half years behind the door. So you got found guilty for that one? So I had a numerous amount of charges. So the main indictment, I was looking at L plate for that. So I was looking at 20 to life for that. That's the main indictment. Wow. So... You know, all praise to God that like, I managed to beat the main charge. So the main charge was kidnap? That was torture. Torture. Yeah. Kidnap by way of torture. So basically they broke it down into... Yeah, they broke down... So what was the police way. allegedly saying that you'd done? Because obviously they had their own their own version of events. Yeah. So what no, was their... They're just alleging that... Um, yeah, someone got kidnapped and things happened to the person. And yeah, but like I said, yeah... Um, I got acquitted on the main charges. I served my time for the stuff that I got found guilty for. Yeah. So you was really looking at 20 years? 
Yeah, 20 to life. Yeah, I remember I went to go and see my, my, my barrister, my, my, my KC, like, we're talking and, like, you G-checked me. Like, sit up. Like, you think this is a joke? I'm swinging in my chair. He's like, sit up. I think you think this is a joke. He's like, I don't think your solicitor's told you how long you're looking. I'm like, yeah, I know, like, because obviously a lot of my friends have been in jail for kidnap. Like, my area's kind of associated with yeah, that yeah. stuff. So I'm like, yeah, maybe double, like, he's like, no, nah, because of the nature of the case, and the publicity behind it, your starting point is 20 years to life. Bro, when he said that, oh my goodness me. You set up real quick. <laughs> real quick. I swear to you, real quick. Like, I had an out of body experience. 20 years is a long time, man. It's a long time. A 20 long... years to life though. What? And that means you really do the 20. 20 years to life. Excuse me? What did you say? 20 to life? No, 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 no. Ah, yeah, man. So, so yeah. you served four years behind the door? Yeah, four and a half years, yeah. What was it like inside? Yeah, so that so now we're older, isn't it? Because now I've been to a couple of times. We'll jump back to them ones. I want to touch on yeah. the, the kidnap one a little bit. So this one now, them times there, my area, the beef that we was having, like, that was like probably the main beef in London, probably in the UK. Like that oh, beef was, everyone was talking about it. So when I've landed in the jail, with my Cody, who was very bait at the time, everyone's talking like, oh, so-and-so's in the jail. Like I said, I've done a lot of jail, so I know a lot of people. So when I've landed in that jail, everyone's talking, everyone's talking about my case. Did you have a respected name in jail? Yeah, man, I've done a lot, you know. I'd, bro, I'd, I'd be upset if I didn't have a respected name, you know. I'll be, I'll be honest with you, I'd be upset if I didn't. I've, I've done a lot in jail, man. Been to a lot of jails, served a lot of block time, I've put in a lot of work in jail, man. I'm not gonna lie. I've, like, over the last 10 years, I've spent more time in jail than I have on the roads. Like, my longest run on the roads, it sounds even bad to say, but my longest run that I've been out is nine months. I've not done more than nine months on the roads. Nine months? Yeah. Rah. That, that's the longest period. That's the I've longest been time you've been out before you've gone back in? Yeah, nine months. When did you last come out? July. Oh, so this is new. You only recently come out? Yeah, recently still. And this is even one of my longest runs out. Wow. wow. But yeah, talk to me. In jail, when you touched down, everyone knew you was there. Yeah, everyone knew. But what's happened now is, because of the nature of the, fate, of the case and like the police were onto us, gangs, you know, onto us, they've separated me and my cold D. We weren't allowed to be together. Imagine that. That, that don't happen. Like I said, at the time, I'm gassed, like everyone knows about my case. I'm getting a buzz until I've gone and seen my solicitor and then he's told me, yo, this is what you're looking at. And then reality was real. This video is sponsored by Cranbrook Law, an award-winning immigration law firm. Their talented solicitors can help when any struggles arise regarding immigration law. They can help get you the visas they need. They can help get you the staff you need from any other countries. As you can see, the website is on the screen right now. So if you need anything to do with immigration law, message Cranbrook Law and let them help you. Whether you're looking to obtain a sponsor license, receive advice and guidance in relation to compliance and our civil penalties, or take advantage of our know-how and experience across a broad range of business visas, our talented and dynamic immigration lawyers are available to speak to you. Telephone numbers on the screen, emails on the screen, and hit the link in the bio if you need any help any problems in prison that time yeah but you see that time especially before my trial anyone that was with me will tell you like i was studying my case like literally i was on some legal solicitor like everyone I was, thinks they're a lawyer when they're inside didn't yeah they? but i was doing the most like yo because well, he's telling me life no 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 you, you i was study like i'm even going to see my solicitor and i'm telling think him things that he missed like i weren't playing game because i'm thinking your life like that ain't no joke that ain't a joke i'm gonna lose on everything and at them times there i had a girl and she's telling me babe you need to come home uh you need to come home and i'm like i need to come home what is it like when you had a missus inside <sighs> so so the first time I had a missus in jail, she done me dirty. What do you mean? Oh, bro, the bitch cheated on me, bro. You know what I mean? The bitch cheated on me, man. But she didn't cheat. Like, she had an affair. Like, yo, like, frat. And you know, do you know the worst part about this girl, yeah? Is she used to come and see me on visits, hold my hand, tell me how she's holding it down. 
And we used to laugh about other couples who are doing dirty and that. Get. I'm not even start with that girl, bro. So she's watching this right now. What are you saying to her? Bro. Listen, man. We, we, oh God, we, we nah. her, she's gonna watch this. <laughs> you know, is I'm not even gonna give her my time in it, but she knows what she's done in it, bro. Now, do you know what is though? Like I said, them times that I was young, I was the man, I was doing the most. So you see, as a man, like I can only speak from my it's experience. Pride, it's your pride, it's your ego. When you get cheated on, it's like me. Like you done this to me, bro. Me, bro. Like you cheat. Like no, no, no. You was having an affair. On me? Nah, nah, stop what it. About what about the boy? Me. me. No, what about the boy she had an affair on? No. With you on? No, do you know what? I swear to you, me as a person, yeah? If you do something to my girl, thank you for letting me know how much of a slag the bitch is. No, I hear that. Like, I'm not going to... In the moment, when you find no, out... No, when I found out, yeah? So obviously, okay, so her, when she done me dirty, hers was worse because she done it with my ex. Uh, her ex, sorry. And then when I asked her why, she said that obviously she didn't want to up her body count and like the guy that she done it with, like he was the closest reminder of me. Can you imagine? And you know what she tried to do as well? She tried to play mind games on me and say like, you're the one that went to jail. So I'm even thinking, well, maybe it is my fault. I'm even thinking, oh, maybe it is me. Like, Cause she tried to be like, oh. You ever consider getting back with her? Her? Back then when it happened. Bro, you're mad, you know. But when it happened? Bro, I remember. Because how I found out, something something in my spirit, yeah, told me, just go through her. Something told me. See, my God, my God is good, you know. Something told me, go through this girl's phone. Just do it. So I went through her phone and something said, don't go on chats with Mandem because... This is this is for the other man of This is how you catch your girl out, yeah? You don't go on conversations with niggas, yeah? You go on yes. conversations with their girls. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. the conversations yeah. with their girls is going to expose everything. So then I see a conversation with one of her girls and she's like, yeah, he's coming to pick me up at seven o'clock. So one minute, you was inside when this happened? Ins bro, there was even a time where she said to a girl, oh yeah, I've just left the visit. With with me, I'm on my way. Oh, nah. If I tell you, you're not going to believe me, bro. Go on, tell me. She tell said, me. I'm on the... I just left the visit. I'm on my way. I'm running late. I need to get ready. He's coming to pick me up. Now I'm a dickhead in life, bro. <laughs> you know, listen, i got to give you credit where credit's due for not going mad, but... Bro, so when I'm going and I'm reading all these messages, yeah? Bro, slow jumps just started playing in the background. Bro, I swear to you, yeah? Bro, my heart, I, bro, it done a tearing sound. I can't believe it. I thought this is. I thought I was dreaming, bro. When the stuff I was reading. So, so clearly you got feelings, then. No, but it's like it was me, though. You're doing this to me. No, I hear that, but you, listen, it take it takes a lot. You, listen, a grown man can have feelings too, but you got yeah, hurt from that. But it was me, bro. <laughs> like, it wasn't about. It was me. You doing this to me? And do you know what it is? You lied to me. Do you know? Do you know? You see, like. If you can't ride a bird, you're better off just being honest and real and just be like, look, I can't do it. Like, this is tough. Yeah, yeah. Just, you know what I'm saying? See, a lot of girls, they like to do this whole, oh, I'm not going anywhere. Why are you telling me what to do? Like, they like to do the most. They like, 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 they like to feel like they have to do something. Like, I'd rather a girl just be real with me than lie to me and do something half-hearted. Remember, I told her to cut. I told her to bounce. She was like, no, she's not going anywhere. Like, she even got my name tattooed. <laughs> you yeah. can't make this up, you know? So obviously, after you found that out, you told her, keep it moving. Yeah, yeah, I told her, kick rocks. So now, I'm planning revenge. So I'm like, all right, cool. How am I going to get back at this girl? Am I going to fuck her bedroom? Am I gonna, what am I going to do? You get it, so... She um even given her too much clout, bro. But she does a certain occupation. And then within that occupation, there's access to other girls. And there was kind of like one girl that I was onto. So I'm like, well, you know what? I'm gonna girls. I love girls, like, but falling like I'm gonna tell a girl what she wants to hear. Standard. But meaning it is a different thing, isn't it? 
But I'm gonna tell a girl what she wants to hear on it. So go on this one. You've moved to her. Yeah. So then this is kind of like the one who was with me on the sentence I just come out of. So Did she hold her. it down? No, no. But obviously with her, obviously there's there's, there's a level of respect there, isn't it? You know what I'm saying? Like she read a bird for me before. So obviously you now this one, you know, like I've promised her I'm not going jail and all of this stuff. And yeah, like so when I've come jail now, when I got sentenced to the four and a half years, I hadn't spoken to her for a little while. So we booked, we planned a visit. My man's like, yo, she's about to break up with you. Hmm? I said, swear down. He said, yeah. So because I had that information. How did he know? Huh? How did he know? For a mutual, innit? Okay. So now I've got that information. So when I've gone in a visit, I've had to kind of switch my speech. So now I'm like, yo, you know what? Like, I don't want you to do this. You know, rare, rare, rare. Just live your life. And then obviously, who knows when I come out, we'll see what happens, innit? So we came to an agreement. I just said to her, look, please, all I ask is stay away from my friends, family, and my ops. That's it. Apart from that, the world is your oyster. And yeah. So that was it really. And obviously in this in this four and a half years you was inside, what problems did you have inside? But you know like as my name was getting bigger and because I've done stuff in jail, people just want to test you more on it. So people want to question your you know, they want to test your gangster. So you got little little young kids coming into the jail, trying to make a name for themselves and things like that. Do you know what I'm saying? So them times there things were happening, but I feel like because we heard a little story on J Dot's yeah, episode. Yeah, my cousin J Dot. Yeah, shout him out. What, what happened times that day? There, like the jail I was in, because I'm keeping up so much like madnesses. They moved me off that house block and they moved me away from all my friends. They said I couldn't be with them in it. So now I'm by myself, and then one day. Like I said, when I ain't got my glasses, I can't see nothing. And one thing about me, even though I keep up with a lot of like madnesses in jail and whatnot, a lot people will tell you one thing about me is I love dominoes. That's me. I just play dominoes and chess on the wing. Dominoes, chess, and I read a lot. Like even though I keep up with madnesses, I like to kind of keep, even when with my friends, I like to keep myself to myself. So one day I just finished playing dominoes. I go in the office and I'm I'm arguing with the govs. About what? I can't remember what I was arguing with. Yeah, yeah. But I was just sticking on because I didn't want to be on that wing. Like, so okay. I kept moaning. And then I ain't got my glasses. You see some black guy just looking at me, bro. I'm thinking, what the fuck is this you looking at, man? Like, <laughs> he's just proper looking at me. I'm thinking, yo, like, but I'm thinking, oh, like, it's about to go off. And then you said my name, you like, CK. I'm like, oh, fuck. So I've walked closer and I'm like, I'm like, yo, what going like? Obviously, it's my cousin, he's in jail. I'm like, yo, what are you doing in jail? Like, you get me? Like, I just spoke to you, he was like, oh, you're jail. Like, and every time I was there, like, my cousin was doing the music thing, he was getting big, like, he was popping. Like, all I kept hearing is my cousin's doing this, my cousin's doing that, like, his name was ringing bells, innit? So I'm thinking, what are you doing in jail, innit? Yeah, so obviously, he's telling me he's there, recall 28 days, whatever. But them times that I was high risk, so I wasn't allowed to have a cellmate. But I'm saying to the govs, and me and Jay are trying to, like, we're trying to turn the guns and say, look, like, because like I said, I was keeping up with a lot of madnesses, innit? Oh, uh, look, like, he can keep me calm. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, trust me, get him to bang on me. He's the only one that's going to keep me calm. Otherwise, I'm going to bang up. Like, I'm threatening to go block. And obviously, because I've got a certain star for my resume, they deal with you a certain way. So I'm like, yo, like, I'll go block. Da, da, da. We managed to convince them because it has to come from a governor to sign you off to allow you to bang up with someone when you're high risk, innit? Yeah, yeah. So for the 28 days, they allowed it because it's my cousin. He was like my access point to the jail. So then imagine now, one day J-Dot's come back, boom, he, he brought the pack. He's like, yo, the pack's come. So everyone in the wing was waiting for me because I was the one doing bits on the wing. Literally, I'm playing, I'm playing dominoes. J-Dot shouted me like, yo, boom, it's come, boom. And one thing I used to do is, whenever I used to do my sales, I used to do it at the end of Soch because some jails don't have like windows, it's ventilators. Yeah, yeah. So imagine that as soon as you bust the pack, it's probably strong. Like your cell's gonna stink, the govs are gonna smell it. I don't wanna get spun. So when you come to me now, he's like, yo, 
Like, what are you saying? I heard the loud come up. Can I get some loud? I'm like, yeah, what do you want? A bill stick pinky? What do you want? He said, no, you're not going to bust me. I'm like, bro, I don't, you're not my bedroom, like, I don't want to bust you. I said, you got a bill stick, uh, you get me, I got you. So I've gone to my soul, J Dot's telling me about the shots he's got. We're getting it ready, we're sitting down. The youth's come again, he's like, yo, what? You're actually not going to bust, man. I'm like, bro, I told you, I don't, I've stood up, like, I'm like, yo, like, bro, I don't chat to you, don't it? Like, I told you, innit? I said, bro, obviously, if you buy a bill stick or a pinky stick, I'm going to knife you, don't it? Like, I'm going to knife you, don't it? Now the guy is standing outside the door, he's looking around. Well, I'm thinking, okay, hmm, what's going on here? <laughs> so I've told J-Dot, yo, let me get the loud. But J-Dot, like, you get me, he's bagging out, he's got his shots, I've got my shots, whatever. And I'm like, yo, let me just get the loud quickly. So I've kind of tucked it away. But I never had time to get the rest of it, because it's bears, isn't it? My man's coming and so he's locked the door. So I'm thinking, and remember, he's a big you. Like, it was the biggest shoot in the jail. He was a... The bigger than your security? Yeah, because you know, no, 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 he's like their size, but he was, sh he was yeah. small and... Stocky. With it, like, he's no neck. You get it? He's yeah, big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, obviously, I don't want to say the youth's name, but if you knew the youth's name, you'll know why they call him that name, innit? Do you know what I'm I saying? I think Jada already told us the name, but don't Yeah, worry. you get me. Watch the movie Friday, innit? So anyways, yeah. So, he shut the door. He's like, yo, run the loud before I start neck shutting niggas. I don't think you're on what I'm on. In my head, I'm thinking, I'm not going out like this, not me. My, 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 Starting on the roads is not, oh, it, it not before it's even begun, my buzz ain't gonna be over. It can't be, no, impossible. How, not me, why? I'm thinking, why, bro? I'm thinking, God, why, bro? I read the Bible, I pray, why? What would I do? <laughs> bro, the guy, so I'm like, yo, but I'm like, bro, I'm like, so I'm trying to calm him down, because his hands in his pocket, he's a big you, I ain't trying to die for some loud. So I'm like, yeah, my, my brother, like, I told you, like, I don't really chat to you. If me and you spoke, he's like, shut up, shut up, shut up. Bro, he's greasing me down. Like, but I'm not gonna lie to you. I didn't say it in no bad way. I'm just like, bro, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna have to die for this loud. He said, what did you say? He said, what did you say? I'm like, bro, man, I'm gonna have to die for this loud. I'm like, bro, like, come on, man. Like, you know who I am, my name. He's like, who are you? Who are you? Where are you from? So I'm thinking, ah, right, this is my chance. Because if I say my area, people know people from my area, he might know someone. So I'm safe. So I'm like, CK, Becton. Like, I said it with chess. <laughs> yeah. He goes, Becton? Like, the way he said Becton is like with disgust. He goes, Becton? <laughs> Becton? <laughs> like, he said it with disgust like, as if to say like... Who are you kind of thing? Yeah. yeah. Then he said where he's from. You get me? <laughs> you ain't coming, bro. He's playing chess though, innit? So now I've said something to Jada in French because he's my cousin. My man goes, hey, 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 you're not making me nervous. You're making me nervous. All right, I'm going to start knocking shit everyone. I'm like, my brother, I told you, if it was my bedroom, I'll give you some love, but I can't do that, bro. Like, I've got pride. I told you, like, I said to him, look, I'll die for the pride. He said, you'll die for your pride, yeah? He's like, you see you, I know what I'm going to do to you. You got pride, yeah? I'm going to embarrass you on the wing. He's gone. He's like, you're moving off the wing today. But he made a big mistake. Oh, you up now. He took his hands out of his pocket. So now I clocked. So as soon as he took his hands up his pocket, this is my chance. So I've just ran and I've just banged him. Boom. <laughs> I banged him. Boom. j -Dot banged him. Boom, boom. I remember j -Dot's a kickboxer. So j -Dot's banged him. Boom, boom. He's bust his nose. So now the youth's like, yeah? So I'm thinking, fuck, where's this shank? Because he's about to... He's about to do us. Yeah. Nah. But obviously, I know j -Dot can fight. He's got me. I got him. Like, we're, we're going to go at it. This youth's trying to open the door. I said, I said, j -Dot. He ain't got a shank. I dashed my chair at him. I dashed my fan, my TV. He ran at him. Bro, we started weighing him in. Yeah? Weighing it, bro. We are, like, I'm telling you, what I've done to this guy, what me and Jada, we are, because now, nah, you came to my soul to rob me in front of my cousin. Like, remember, I've been on the wing. You're trying to question my throat in front of my cousin. We was, bro... I'm on top of him, Jado's booting off his face. Like, there's blood everywhere. You get me? I'm looking for my shank. I ain't got it. My man's trying to fight back. Like I said, he's a big you. Like, I broke the fan in his head, the TV. <laughs> like, we're just using every weapon. Anything we can find, we're using, yeah? Remember, now he's bloodied up. But that's not enough for me, innit? So, he's on top now. He's trying to do some super sane. Rah! Like this. Like, I beat his ear. 
<laughs> but I'll be real with it. You see in that moment, yeah? I blacked out. You bit his ear off. Yeah, I blacked out. I swear to you. I blacked out. <laughs> Something came over me. Because this man tried to rob me. So a spirit, I swear to you, a spirit came over me. I don't know what happened, but in that moment, I just remember there's an ear on the floor. I swear to you. I bit his ear. I ripped it off. I, like, I, as in, I bit it. I teared it off. Like, well, like you this. took the ear it, it clean off. He's, the top is gone. Oh, it's on the floor. Bro, there was blood everywhere, yeah? <laughs> Imagine now, yeah? When this is happening, obviously, I'm good on the wing. I've got youngs, I've got people, I've got youngs. I don't really need to do much, innit? Like, see, I've got security here. Yeah. When I go jail, more time, I've got security, I've got youngs, I've got, I got, I got people around me, I've got hits. I don't need to do much, innit? Like I said, I just play dominoes, I just chill, innit? And okay. just make money on the wing, innit? So... They're trying to get in a cell, but they can't get in because the govs are blocking it. Like they call all available staff. Like if you know in jail, when it's a serious thing, they call all available staff. Like every member of staff comes. And remember, they're in front of my door. So I remember the gov told me like when he opened the flat, he see my face. And J Dot's kicking this you. I'm biting his ear off. I got blood in my mouth. And I'm just looking at the gov. You're gonna die in here. I whispered it like a. J, I don't think J Dot heard me say that. No, no, J Dot heard it. J Dot heard it. I said you're gonna. I said, I, said, I said you're gonna die in here, and no one's gonna save you. He tried to rob me in my cell, uh, but I, you, I don't have. It's even like you know what. All jokes aside, thank God I didn't have my shank on me. Nothing because I don't know what would happen, bro. We are just we worked this guy like to the point where when the gloves came and they opened the door, they said right. They told him to come to him, and he kind of crawled like this. And I remember everyone's looking like, oh, man, oh, they're cheering, like they got the wings going crazy. I remember I looked to Jada, I said, we say one for the landing, yeah? So we ran out, we pushed past the govs and we stamped on him in front of the landing so everyone can see us, like. So what happened to you lot after that? Did you get any extra time or anything like that? If I told you, you're not going to believe me. The govs came to me and said, thank you, because he was a bully. Oh, That's he what was. he was. He was a bully, like on the wing, like he used to bully stuff, everything, like, like as in, they threw out the nickel, like it doesn't exist. Like he went to hospital. Now the worst part of the story is everyone's talking about it at the window, innit? Like, so I'm getting gassed, I'm getting my mum off and I'm pumped now, innit? Like, like I got even to the point where like, I remember that night, Jay told me, bro, I beg you to shut up, bro. Cause I was, I was like, Jay, you see what we, like I was, but I was calling everyone, like I was pumped. Like, oh, this man trying to rob me. And plus he was the biggest guy in the jail. So that's an extra branding point, innit? But obviously after that's happened, he's had a couple of people on the wing. So we're banged up for a couple of days because obviously when you get into a situation in jail, while you get served the nicking, it's kind of like, um, not a warrant, but it's like when you get in trouble, they serve you a nicking and it's like a day in court, okay. basically. It's like yeah, a day yeah. in court. You get served a day in court, you're charged, whatever. You've got a couple of days to get ready in it. So they've served me my nicking. So for those two days, I'm behind my door. But remember, he's been on the wing longer than me. So I don't know who's got him, who's not. So me and Jada are like, yo, you know when we come out, it might go off. So remember, we see him in one of his bedrooms. Like, my man's like, yo, why go on? Me and Jada just pushing the show straight away, back to the shack. So oh, you got my man? Like we was moving erratic. Because we didn't know who had him, innit? Yeah, nah, true, fair enough. You know what I'm saying? Have to move like that. Okay. Yeah, but obviously after that, bro, the ratings went mad. Govs were rating it. Bro, they threw it out. Nothing, no, we didn't get in trouble, nothing. They threw it out. Literally, they threw it out. Because like I said, the guy was a bully and that's why you shouldn't be a bully in life, innit? Was that the only time you served time with J-Dot? Yeah, like, obviously, now I've been in jail while he's been in jail, but that was the first time that like, we'd actually done jail yeah, together, so. like, like, me, because I've done a lot of jail, like, I've been to, like, 13 jails. So I've met a lot of people from my area and this and that, but that was the first time me and J-Dot were actually on the, like, on the wing at the same time. What jail's the worst that you've been to? And they sent me there, bro. What was it like in there? First, it was it was a stitch up because my sentence alone wasn't even long enough to go there. Because in order for you to go to an ACAT, you need to be serving more than 10 years or five years behind the door. So first of all, my sentence wasn't long enough. And then secondly, I had about under a year to go when they sent me there. I had about nine months to go when I went there. What, your last nine months they sent you there? Yeah. What was it like inside? So number one, like, again, without saying too much before, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to be hotting up people's things, but I think the obvious thing that everyone knows is them jails are kind of run by Muslims. 
Like it's 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 a deen, it's a brotherhood, it's run by the Quran, innit? If you're a brother, you're nice. If you're not a brother, there's a problem. You can still be nice as long as you're cool with the brothers. Yeah. So remember, I, I've got a name, I, and I had people in there that were doing big sentences. You get me? So obviously, I'm in there now. First guy I spoke to, I'm complaining like, yeah, why they got me here dispersed? Da, 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 taking the piss. He's like, oh, how long are you doing? I remember, because of how I look under the mask, people assume I'm Muslim. So like, and some in them places that you got people that are big on their deen. So it's like, if you're not Muslim, then you're a kuffar, yeah, yeah. non-believer. They're not gonna chat to you. Do you know what I mean? So, but then obviously you got some that are still cool. Not, not always like that. The first guy I spoke to, I remember the first conversation I had, I kid you not, I'm complaining. The guy goes, oh, how long you doing? I said, oh, I'm home in a few months. I'm just pissed off. He goes, well, at least you're going home. I go, okay, when you going home? He says, never. He's like, he's, he's full life. So I'm thinking, fuck. Well, so, imagine, imagine actually going to prison and knowing you're never coming out. Do you know what I'm saying? And remember, like I said, I'm in this place where people are doing 30s, 35s. Like, not to say people have evil eyes because you see there, you, I met, see in prison, I've met some of the most pure hearted people. But it's just for me, I'm not going to lie to you. Remember, they're, they're, people there got nothing to lose. Do you know what I'm saying? Awesome. Like, like, I've seen man be chilling on the wing and he's friends with a man for a month and they're getting him in, he's all friendly. And then the man says to him, yo, get a trim. What if, not to say that they are evil eye, but what if, because what's going to stop a man saying, yo, this guy's going home? So what, do you know what I'm saying? And because yeah. I was going home and I was like one of the only people going home there, for me, mentally, it was a lot to deal with because like I said, I'm here with my friends that have, an X amount of time to go. I'm around people that are doing a very long time. So I can't even speak on certain things. I can't even brag about going home. I can't even speak about what it's going to be like when I get out because for my situation. So I'm not going to lie to you. Mentally, it was a lot. Like mentally, waking up in that place every day, it took it took a lot out of me. Like it was a reality check. Like, yo, CK, like, yo. Like, remember, because I told you my sentence, I was looking at L plate. So in my head, I'm thinking, yo, this could have been you, you know? Yeah, so real. God's really giving you another chance. So it was an eye open about the same time. Mentally, it was a lot. And it was it was very upsetting for me. It was mixed emotions because at the same time, I just finished my sentence. But at the same time, like, my brothers in here, they're not going home. So Did you find some good brothers in there as well? No, I found some good brothers. Also got into a mad situation. <laughs> what happened? Nah, so obviously, it was um, like kind of like one of the brothers. He was like their hitter again. Another, one, I don't know why these big guys they like trying me, man. But he kind of like we got into a situation. We got into an argument. He's trying to get the brothers on me, but obviously, like I said, some of my man and my brothers, I was good. He kept trying to send hits. It weren't working. So one day I said, you know what? I'm just gonna kill two birds one stone. I want to get shipped out of here. And I don't like how this guy's moving. But I started mashing him up. Mashed him up. And now I'm behind my door. Bro, there's a hit on my head, man. <laughs> they put a hit on my head. So obviously it's a big debate. It's a big deal. Like rare, 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 this and that. So then, um, but obviously it got, it got crushed. Then after that, the gov shit me. They sent me to my local jail. Belmarsh, not any better. Ended up going Belmarsh, getting into mad things. I'm thinking it's my last few months. But all I'm thinking is, all I cared about, yeah, was not getting chucked in my face. That's all I cared about. I, I just didn't want to scar my... That's all I cared about. I swear to you. That's all I... All I'm thinking is, bro, you've just done this long. You've just done four years. You've got a few months left. Just don't get cut in your face. Just don't leave a permanent mark on your face. Then they sent me Belmarsh, warring in there. But yeah, came home, sweet. So you said you read some books in prison. What kind of books? Yeah, 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 yeah. So see me, 50 Cent's my guy. That's my guy. Get me, that's a, that's a street guy. Really made it out of the hood. I really made it out of the hood. Took over the corporate world. Like he took over. No sympathy. Like, yo, he done it. Like, so 
He's got a book called Hustle Harder, Hustle Smarter. Like, I'd advise anybody, if you have someone in jail, or even if you're in jail watching this, that book is, I swear to you, it's the best investment you can ever make. Like I read that book. I read a lot of Robert Greene books. It sounds mad, but I was reading a lot of like dictator books. So Gaddafi, Idi Amin, Mugabe. I was reading a lot of their books. You know what I'm saying? I was reading a lot of them type of books, kind of like seeing that, like how are we going to strategize? How, how am I going to, do you know what I mean? How am I going to make an impact when I come out? What's going on guys? This video is sponsored by Manscaped. I've been sent this little tool called the Handyman. If you're traveling, need a quick touch up, need a quick fix, literally grab your Handyman, turn it on, and that's literally you good to go. If your beard's outgrown, or if you just need to quickly line yourself up, Grab the handyman, you can keep it in your bag. It's literally so small. Don't forget to use code BLUETICK on checkout for 20% off. Did you decide when you was in there and obviously you were reading books trying to turn your life around in some sense, did you decide that's the last time you're going to prison? Did you think I'm going to Yeah, come yeah, definitely, but there was a moment. So there was two. One, when there's a jail that anyone that's been jail knows, there's a jail called Stockton. It's called Sticky Stockton. When you go to that place, you ain't leaving. And... Obviously, after I left J-Dot, um, a, lot, a lot of my friends were in certain jails. But I wanted to do my own thing. Like I said, when I'm in jail, I kind of do my own thing, innit? Even though I bang out a fight, I still kind of, I'm on my own, man. I do my own thing. Play dominoes, I play chess, I read, I'm on my own. So I decided to get shipped up north away from my friends. So I went to the jail because I wanted to get something called DCAT, which is open prison. So all of that was working. Because of my reputation and my name, anything that happened on the wing, govs will associate with me. So something will happen on the wing, I'll get put in a block. Mate, right, should, all right, back of the cell, boom, put me in a block two weeks, come out. Even if there's nothing to do with you. Nothing, listen, I'm saying whispers, like it could be anything, intel, anything. It'll be, it'll be 5 a.m. Do you know the PTSD that is? Like 5 a.m., you are fast asleep. They open your door screaming, get to the back of the Bro, that shit there is crazy. It's mental. Back of the cell. Start screaming. Hands on your head. He's moving. Running right. Shoot, that is mad. So when I got shipped to that job north, Stockton, yeah, I was calm. I actually wasn't doing anything. Bro, they just kept putting me in the block, kept putting me in the block. These times I had my decap. So one day they've come to me now and they said, oh, we're moving you. And they put me on a certain wing. But that wing they put me on, I had someone who had a problem with, like, we we had beef. You get in them times that it's lockdown. And I, I'm not going to lie, I can't speak for other man, but me, any real guy who's in jail will tell you the best thing that happened to jail was lockdown because you had peace. You didn't have to worry about banging out. You didn't have to worry about pride. You didn't have to worry about stepping out. You could just ride your sentence. Peaceful. Like, do you understand? So... They've moved me onto his wing. Like, onto his wing. Someone set me up. Someone hated me, bruv. They moved me onto his wing. And you see me, I'm not snitch. I'm not going to be like, rare, rare. I remember I said to the governor, I said, look, there's no point unpacking my stuff. Just leave my stuff. I'll be back in a block. I said, I'll be back here. I said, I swear to you, I said to the governor, I said, I'll be back here. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, in jail, a lot of people talk, they do this whole, they talk, they talk a good game. I said, cool, I'll be back. They put me on the guy's wing. The guy's trying to talk to me through my door. I said, look, we'll talk when we come out. I've come out now, but I've not seen him. So we missed each other that day, but he, he, he keeps talking to me through like the doors and that. So, I'm, so I've asked him a question, like, cause obviously my bro banged him over, ain't it? He knows who he is. My bro knows and I don't need to say too much names. Yeah, and I just want to go decap, man. I just want to go, but I want to go home. And obviously them times there, like, there was still kind of hope for me and like the girl that I was talking to. Like yeah, there was still yeah. kind of hope. Like we weren't talking at the time, but now and then I'll check up on her and there was still hope. And like, yo, has she got a man? No, no, she ain't got a man. Okay, cool. She's still there. Like, <laughs> so I'm thinking, yo, I need to get home before she gets snapped up. Cause yo, she is buff. So I know they're coming for her and they know that she's single. Yeah. So the vultures are going to hunt. So I needed to get home. Like daddy's home. Yeah. So now they've put me on his wing. He said to me the answer that I didn't want to hear. I'm like, yeah, my man knows what it is when I see him. Straight on site. Yeah. 
Then I banged the gov. What? I banged the gov. Why? <sighs> bro. <laughs> what do you mean you banged the gov, bro? Then they put me in my cell, wherever. So I'm like, I wanna go block. I wanna go block. They're airing me. So I put a plastic bag on my oh, head. What? <laughs> I was about to interrupt you, but I can't. Carry yeah. on. And I tied a rope to my neck like this. And I lied down on the floor. I said, if you don't come in, I'm going to kill myself. Open the door. Then obviously they've come. Great cracking. Now they've moved me block. Because I'm thinking, yo, you lot just made me lose my DK. You're violating, so. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, You're they put really me mad, Eli. Huh? You're really like a madman, isn't it? Like for real, for real. I've just realised we're one hour in and you're really, really mad, isn't it? No, but obviously, you see in Joe, you have to be mad sometimes of with course, these girls. I'm just saying though, like man to man, you're really like a madman, man, Like, like so, for real, for real. <laughs> man yeah. wrapped a plastic bag around his head and was ready to say, I'm going I'm to go. You know, I weren't really going to do it, but, but it's just like... <laughs> that's the worst thing no, about it. The it's for the gloves. It. Like, it's for the gloves, isn't it? So you bang the glove on purpose, obviously. Bro, it just happened in the heat of the moment, bro. <laughs> I swear to you, it just happened. All right, cool, God, I'm, I'm hearing it. Carry on. Like, do you know when I banged the gov, I swear to you, me and the you even stopped scrapping. I was like, fuck, shit, man. We stopped scrapping, both of us. Like, shit, did you know. drop him? Did the, did the yeah, gov the, I swear to you, the gov went down quickly. <laughs> and you see, when you bang a gov, you know they're going to fuck you up. Yeah. So they put me in a block, no food, nothing. They just threw me in there. I slept for like two days. No, just my shoes on, tracksuits, ready every night. Because I've had experiences with guns. They've mashed me up before. We've, oh, for we've gone at it. We've had wars. So, yeah, like, they kept me in a block three... I was in a block three, four months. Throughout the whole Euros. Bro, they kept you in for time. Yeah, I missed the whole Euros. Yeah. Like, I've even got a bar, but I say I was in a block for the, for the Euros. Pissed that I missed it. You get me? Like, I missed the whole Euros. But in that moment, because the jail was in... At a radio, it was a why not radio, and it had one channel, BBC Radio One. That's it, nothing else. Only one channel. That's when life was real. I'm like, yo, I'm in the block. I'm by myself. I'm up north. I got this white guy from up north that keeps calling me a spear chucker, and he's just racist. And they put me next to a racist by per bro. They put me next to a racist. They put two of them next to me. Like, I'll be sleeping. And it'll be free, yeah, man. All I hear is, you're fucking nigga. You're nigga. Bro, 3 a.m. <laughs> like, I'm sleeping. You're nigga. you fucking spear chucker. You come to my country. For real, free when you're making... Bro, I can't make this up, bro. Bro, like, I swear to you, like, just all night, just keeping me up, like. <laughs> so that's when reality is like, yo... I don't want this life, man. It's bigger than me, man. I don't want it. I just want peace. I just want to go home, man. Like, and then that's when I was speaking to my bedroom, natural, free him up. You get me? He was just like, yo, bro, man. You might as well just start writing, man. You get it? Just start writing. So that's when I started writing. That's when I started doing music. You get me? Yeah. So you've so. come out now and you're pursuing a music career. Yeah, I come out. Obviously, so first, like I said, my Cody, my bedroom, he come out of jail before me, way before me. So obviously after that time when I was in Stockton, I got moved to he's just I got moved to a jail called Swell Side, innit? They call it Stab Side. Anyone that's been knows about Joe's knows that. See Swell Side. That's a serious jail. That's where people are made and broken. You get me? Like literally I landed in that jail on my first day, a guy tried running myself and stab me up. I had to do a mad thing. Like, like that jail's real. It goes down in that jail. So when I landed there, they kept me on induction. They said I couldn't be with the people from my area. They had to keep me segregated. But because I was banging out so much, so much, eventually the, gov the governor, the governor, the main governor comes to me and said, look, I'm going to give you one chance to be with your friends. That's how I ended up in dispersal, like I told you, in the ACAP, because I up with my friends. We were doing a lot. And then they moved me dispersal. So I think that's why they done it. But so when I was with my friends, I wasn't allowed to be with them. My Cody, he left. Uh, he got a year less than me, so he's gone home now. He's dropped a tune. He got like a mil views in like two weeks. He's come out to buzz. So he's like, I was speaking to him on the phone. And I'm not gonna lie, he's the reason why I kind of done this whole music. Yeah. So you're telling me girls are showing us love? Let's go. So I've come out now, done the music thing, dropped a little freestyle. 
And remember, I, this is a little feast. This is nothing, man. You get me? But I'm getting love, like, I'm, I'm getting foreign things hitting me up. I'm getting girls sending me selfies. I'm getting girls, they're not even saying hello. They're just sending me nudes straight away. I'm thinking, yo, this shit's crazy, bro. This music thing is mad. You get me? But at the same time, I love my people around. I love my brothers because my brothers are telling me, yo, look, you got talent. You can do it. Let's make it happen. You know what I'm saying? So my brothers are pushing me like, yo, get him in the studio. Get like, yeah, I'll be yeah. chilling. And like, I'll get my brother, my brother S. Rose, who's shy. He'll be like, yo, I booked studio for you tonight. You get me? Or like, CK might call you and say, look, studio's there tonight. That's older CK. He might shy me and say, look, I booked a studio session for you tonight. Or like, Skanks might call me and say, yo, studio like my my people are pushing me do you get it they actually push me like they they want to see me blow and you know like coming out of jail having a support system makes a difference makes the world a difference do you understand like my people are telling me look bro even if you have to live with x y and z to your name we got you we'll support you just push the music thing and that's a beautiful thing for me you get me because it helps me it takes all the pressure off me now i can just focus on the music i could just do me you get me so yeah, I've come out now. Like people are hitting me up, but I've got labels shouting me like, "Born, we want to." People want to know my story. People are telling me do the music thing. Like you know, like for me, I'm a no one. But to wake up to a message from someone like, "Yo, I heard your tune," it's like shout me out, and you see me like I watch everything. So anyone that's been there for me, or anyone that showed me love. I'm going to remember. So I'm going to remember anyone that pushed me. And obviously, I was kind of lucky because I had people around me who was really in the industry. But then I had also, I had other people in the industry that kind of like, show, not other people, I had certain people in it. Like, for example, like, you see like, someone like Shabo, I got nothing but appreciation for her. You get me? Because like, when I've dropped my freestyle, she didn't need to. But she's posted, man. She's reposted it. She's shown my love, and you don't need to do that. Who am I to you? Do yeah, you get it? I hear that. I respect it. So, things like that, I appreciate. I remember because now, God willing, I get to a certain stage. I'm gonna remember who was there for me. So, look, obviously, you have tried to stay on a straight and narrow path. Yeah. But one thing we got to touch on: you got two serious geezers by your side. They don't look like the normal security I got, like, like I've I've seen around town. No. Where where do you find them? Bro, oh, yeah, they're from they're from um, they're from Ghana, you know. So, so by security, define what your definition of security is, because nah. I think we're looking at two defi different yeah, definitions nah. here. So, I bought them straight from Africa. You get me, like, got them in, like, a mad, just a little light wage, you know, got them each on a bag a week, in it, just quickly little wage, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, in Africa, a grand a week, it's a lot. You know what I'm saying? That, that does a lot for the minute. So, that's why these people next to me, they, bro, they're willing to die for me, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're my security. They put me in a better position. They allow me to just move freely. Because like I said, obviously, I've got issues out on the roads that I can't handle the way I want to handle because I'm on license. So they allow me to just kind of manoeuvre without so having... Are they better than a normal security? Yeah, no, come on, bro. They're willing to... Well, they, like I said, they're fresh from... These people, what they've seen, lad, they're fresh from, fresh from Ghana. Don't play no games. You can't get next to me... If, my own mum can't get next to me if I don't want her next to me. They don't play games. I don't know, bro. They don't look that serious, you know. You reckon? Nah, man. I reckon they like. Uh, is it like an act? Or you just got two men and like, just told them come in. We don't talk too much, man. But like I said, <laughs> yeah, nah, nah. Listen, I, I've heard the story. Don't yeah, worry. Like, anyone that sees me out approach and they do it in a, in a legal way, so that way, if anything happens, I'm good. Yeah. I protect myself. So that's kind of pretty much what it is. You know, what I'm saying everything is a protection. This, the mask, it kind of just allows me to just do me, live my life. I can just do me, do you know what I'm saying? I can just do me without no complications, without no headache, nothing. I can just kind of like do me, you get me? And obviously at the same time, I'm also on license, you know? The law, they just want any excuse to throw a guy back in jail. Any excuse. And you're not so, going back, yeah? No, nah, no, nah, never, never. Life's too sweet, man. Like, <sighs> I couldn't tell you, man. I couldn't make this up, but life is sweet. If you knew how I was living, Trust me, life is sweet. And I know that it's only going to get better. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I know that it's only going to get better. So I want to minimize, I want to minimize the risk, pain and use that negativity of turning it into something positive. So that's the good thing about music. You know what I'm saying? And look, if you've got talent in something and that's anything in life, you need to just pursue it head on. You can't half step because life is short. You have one life. 
Well, listen, CK, there's a lot of the younger generation who knew, know who you are, right? We're not going to pretend like you're an unknown face to the, to the game. People know your name. They know exactly who you are. The younger boys out there watching this, what would you, bit of advice you'd give to the younger generation? You see, like, me, I'm not a bad person. I didn't want to be bad. Life happened. And I had to deal with what life threw at me. But if you can escape this route, you know what I'm saying? If you can go, if you can go uni, if you can go, if you can work, if you can play football, if you've got a talent, if you can do anything apart from the roads, then pursue it because there's nothing on the roads except for pain, loss, which is with a loss of time or loss of life. I've got people in the grave, I've got people doing life. They can't rewind, they can't go back. Oh, Remember, like stuff. I said, it's, it's all fun and games when it's fun and games until you lose a friend. You understand? It's all fun and games until your friend is doing 30 years. And you understand? It's all fun and games until you're in a dock by yourself and your bedrooms are not there. It's all fun and games until you're the one in jail and your girl's cheating on you while you're in jail. It's all fun and games until you're in jail. You're calling your bedroom and saying, yo, my boy, do me a favor. Look, can you go and drop X, Y, and Z to my mum and he's not doing it. Yeah, you understand? True. It's all fun and games until your mum calls you and says, oh, son, look, I need to tell you something. I'm a bit ill and you can't do nothing. Do you understand? So for me, like, I'm trying to help the kids in my community. Like, so the other day, I haven't done something like, you know, we've been doing little things in my community. Like, so the other day, I just went to McDonald's in my area and like, I got all the school kids at McDonald's. And like, I was kind of like speaking to them, trying to show them, look, boom, do you know what I'm saying? There's no need, like, so we're just trying to do little things in my area to, because like I said, my area, a lot has happened in my area. So if, if I can help one kid, I've done my job, innit? No, 100%. And that's what I'm it's not, about at the end of the day. Yeah. Your past is your past for a reason. And I always say to people who have come on the show who have done real mad stuff, because you have, as long as you change, and you try and do better, even if you help one person, yeah. then you've done your job. Yeah, because like I said, I could be on here now making it look good. Like I could come in here, and I could tell, listen, I could tell you stories for views. They're going to say, oh my goodness me, what kind of life is he living? Like, I could sell you Top Boy better. Like, you think Top Boy is something, but we're not here trying to glorify this life. Do you understand? We're just trying to show you that this life is real. Yeah. And sometimes I feel like people misconstrue the things that I'm saying or things that I say in my bars. So yeah, like I said, like if I can help one youth, that's one enough, innit? If I can stop one life from being saved, that's one enough. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I got ops that call my phone. Like I got some of you lot's favorite rappers. Like you wouldn't even know. If I told you, you're not gonna believe me. Like they call my phone to tell me, yo bro, like I want out. I could be a scumbag. I could air it out, I could play recordings, all of that. I literally tell them, look, bro, you wanna live your life? Like, you've got my word, I ain't gonna trouble you. Because like I said, I'm just looking for peace. And if me and that guy could come together and save our life, then we've done our job, you get me? So bro, listen, to wrap it up, is there anything that the viewers need to watch out for? You got some music dropping? Yeah, I've got music dropping. Um, I've got my tune coming out, Hometown, literally, it's like, but yeah, so we're bringing it back. So I've got my tune. It's going to be dropping shortly after this. Just watch out for that. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, literally just I want to be more active on socials. I need to be. Like, like, obviously, I've been in jail a long time. That whole social media thing kind of weren't my thing in it. That's why if you see my friends' music videos, all that, you wouldn't really see me in videos. Even now, you see me wearing a mask because the limelight ain't no really case. my thing in it. You know what I'm saying? But... I'm going to start getting more active on social. It's going to be literally 2024. They're going to know me. If they don't know, they're going to know, innit? Like I said, if they don't know, they're going to know. And the industry, I'm not going to lie, man. I'm coming, man. I'm coming. They're going to take me in by fire by force, bro. I swear to you, by fire by force. I'm, I'm coming for them, and I got paying for them. Everywhere possible to get hold of him in the bio. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.